Stay tuned for the following special presentation from KOFO, 1220 and 103.7 FM. KOFO, your sports source for East Central Kansas, welcomes you to the Wise Guys Construction Braves Basketball Pregame Show. Whether it's residential, commercial, or restoration construction you need, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa at 785-229-5651. Now for a preview of this Ottawa University Braves basketball broadcast, here's KOFO's David Potter. pregame show. We're done with the first half of the game here today as the women's team falls to 11th rank the Tabor Blue Jays 49-40 in a tough one where it was neck and neck down the stretch but they were able to pull away as the fourth quarter went on but onward and upward as now the men's team has a chance to beat a Tabor team that's receiving votes to the top 25 in their own right. Now I talked in the women's pregame show about how the game represented a chance for them to show that they were right there with the rest of the team up there in the top of the conference, stuck at 6-0 and 5-1, and and I, I believe they showed that. And now this men's team has a similar chance to do the same thing. They're sitting at 4-2, and two, and much like the women's team, their schedule a bit backloaded as they have uh, not played the teams really at the top of the conference yet. But now they have a chance to play a Tabor team that is one of the best in the conference and is receiving votes for the top 25. And after that rocky start for the Braves, there has been playing much better basketball here, again, riding this four-game win streak. And if they can make it five and knock off this Tabor team that's close to being ranked, that would be a huge statement as they get – as we're getting closer to, uh, well, we're we're already well into KCAC play at this point, but we're getting closer to that break over Christmas. And if they can go in with some momentum, including a win over this Tabor Blue Jays team here today, that would be huge in establishing where they are in the pecking order in terms of the KCAC. They have a chance to make themselves 5-2 and two here. But first, they have to go through this Blue Jays team that is 6-6 six six overall, but 5-1. and one in conference play, meaning they went just 1-5 and five in the non-con. But if you take a look at the uh, at the teams that played the non-con, there's really no shame in being where they are. They played a tough Morningside College team to a one-point game, lost that one 87-86, lost at College of the Ozarks to, is not ranked, but is a very competitive program. They lost that one 95-83. They did beat Johnson and Wales, um, but they they uh, lost to a very tough Hastings College team, 77-69. So they played a tough non-conference schedule and only got one win out of it. But then they've been on a roll since KCAC play started. They started things off by beating Bethel College by 10, 81-71. Another double-digit win over Sterling on the road right after that. Then they played at number 17, York College, and won that one by 17 points, 99-82. So kind of their first statement victory of the season. And then they would go on to uh, play Friends University, win that one by nine. And then they went on the road, and that was where their – uh, it was against St. Mary. That was where they picked up their lone KCAC loss so far. They lost that one 95-86 by nine points over 20, to a 24th-ranked University of St. Mary team. Then they rallied back with a 13-point win on Thursday at home against McPherson, and that leads them to this game here against OU this afternoon. Now, when you look at their team, they've got two guys that stand out immediately. They're the team two leading scorers, averaging 18 and 17 and a half points per game. They're also the uh, two most regularly used players in Lance Carter and Julian Winton. Lance Carter, a 6'4 forward, a senior out of Troy, Ohio, and then Julian Winton, a junior, originally from just up the road in Olathe, Kansas. He's a six-foot guard, so those two are the ones who make make the offense go 
not necessarily great three-point shooters as this, unlike the Tabor women's team, is not a great three-point shooting team hitting just under a third of their threes. They also don't shoot a ton of threes, a pretty average amount. And uh, Lance Carter, even though he does get 18 points a game, only 10 of 33 from behind the arc, just a 30% shooter from behind the perimeter. And then Lance Carter, also, uh, or excuse me, Julian Winton, shooting just under 30% at 18 and 61. But they play about 35 and 33 minutes a game, respectively. So they'll be out there quite a bit. The only other Tabor Blue Jay averaging double-digit points per game is Devondre Jones. Devondre Jones, a uh, six foot four wing, a senior out of Fridley, Minnesota. So they've got starters out of Ohio and Minnesota, and as well as Georgia and California. So Tabor recruiting a little more nationally than you see oftentimes here in the KCAC. You tend to see players if not mainly from Kansas, at least from the Midwest, but they were able to get kids from really all over the country. But Devontae Jones averaging about 11 points a game. He's a 58% shooter from the floor. He has not attempted a single three, so he's more of a player who likes to get in to the lane and score on more efficient shots. He's also a 78% free throw shooter. Carter and Winston, sub-70% free throw shooters. So those are guys who you can foul and won't necessarily kill you at the line. But Javante Jones, about 11 points, four and a half rebounds per game. I should also mention with regard to Lance Carter, in addition to being the team's leading scorer, he's also far and away the team's leading rebounder with about eight and a half per game, and far and away the team's leading assist man with 70 on the season, which is just shy of six per game. And he also has six blocks and a team-high 22 steals on the year, which is almost two per game to his name as well. So Lance Carter is uh, really does a little bit of everything for these Tabor Blue Jays. As he is, uh, again, a 6-4 forward, but an adept passer leading the team in assists and plays good defense with... 22 steals to his name. He has turned the ball over 48 times, so that's four turnovers per game, which is not terrible for a guy who has the ball in his hand as much as Carter does, but it is noteworthy that you can get him to flip the, flip the possession here and there by turning the ball over if you're able to get good pressure on him. And the Braves have a couple of really good defensive point guards in, of course, Hollis Mitchell, and then not a starter, but Jacob Nidig, a great defender off the bench. And at 6'3", he can play some good defense as well. So we'll see. Lance Carter listed as a forward, but clearly has the ball in his hands quite a bit, so it'll be interesting to see if he's defended by a forward or if he plays more of a perimeter game. Clearly, he puts up a lot of threes, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how he's used. It's a little misleading looking at the at the uh, staff sheet for him. We'll take a quick break, and then we'll look a little closer at these Ottawa Braves and their four-game win streak. You're listening to the Wise Guys Construction pregame show here on KOFO. You know Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa as the premier residential and commercial construction company. But did you know they also provide full repair for fire and flood restoration? Here's Bill Crowley, owner of Wise Guys Construction. We offer full turnkey services from cleaning and drying to the repairs of your project. We're an insurance preferred contractor. When disaster strikes, experience matters. When it comes to your residential, commercial, or restoration needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa, 785-229-5651. Confidence. Passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today.
again, that was, of course, our national anthem as we are getting closer to tip off. So about five and a half minutes left till the start of the game between OU and Tabor. The men's team getting ready to face off. We talked a little about Tabor before the break. Taking a little closer look at the Braves. It's still Titus Rice, the engine behind this offense. Two games ago, he scored 28, and then on Thursday, he scored 24. In between was last Saturday's game against Bethel, and he was held to just six, but the Braves were able to score over 90 points regardless, even with that tough game offensively for Titus Rice. So it's good news when you see that your team leading score can have an off night and you're still capable of approaching triple digits on the scoreboard. Then, of course, you've got Logan Bollinger really coming on. Or, well, he's been playing well all year, but has had a, turned in a few really nice performances here recently. He's averaging 16 and a half points and five rebounds per game. He's starting to get that three-point shot working. So he's a 30% shooter from behind the arc for the year. But here in recent games, we've shot, seen that shot from the top of the key start falling for him. And that adds a dangerous element to his game where he's already an excellent score from around the basket. He's got a, a silky smooth jump shot from the elbow and it as uh, you know, just around the free throw line about that 12 to 16 foot area. When he can get that working, extend it all the way out to the three-point line, he becomes a very difficult player to guard because as the team really only big man in for the most part, he usually draws the biggest player for the opponent. And usually the biggest player is not especially adept at guarding all the way out to the perimeter, so that can create some mismatches to where they either have to rotate and put a smaller player on Bollinger and rotate that bigger player on to a quicker player for OU, or that big man for the opponent has to guard all the way out to the three-point line, which again, usually is not something they like to have to do. We'll take another break. We're getting close to the tip-off here. You're listening to the Wise Guys Construction Briefing Show on KOFO. Bill Crowley owner of Wise Guys Construction in Ottawa on what sets them apart as your trusted source for residential and commercial construction. We're not a handyman service. We're a professional licensed construction company. We're not only licensed in Ottawa. With our license, we can work anywhere. Which means? No matter what the project or where, you get a licensed contractor every time. We've been in business for 13 years. Our experience and customer service are what keeps us in business. Wise Guys Construction, 785-229-5651. Want to go see the Chiefs play at Arrowhead Stadium? How about sit in the front row? KOFO and McCoy's Furniture Loft want to send you. All you have to do is stop by Furniture Loft on Market Street in Osage City and register. And you and a friend could be sitting in front row to watch a Chiefs game. Only one win per person per season. KOFO and McCoy's Furniture Loft employees and their households are not eligible to win. No purchase is necessary. The next giveaway will be for the Chiefs game December 18th against the Tennessee Titans. We'll announce the winner December 12th on the Brad Howard early morning show and welcome back to wilson Fieldhouse. the teams are finishing up their warm-ups and we'll we're just about ready to have the starting lineups introduced so we're going to take one final break and then we should be back for the tip-off between the Tabor blue jays receiving votes for the top 25 and the ottawa braves looking to establish themselves here at the top of the conference you've been listening to the wise guys construction pregame show on kofo Thank you for listening to the Wise Guys Construction Braves Basketball Pregame Show. Tip-off is next on KOFO. Anyone can call themselves a construction company, slap a sign on the side of their truck, and drive around town looking for work. Is that who you want to hire? No. You're smarter than that. Wise Guys Construction at 108 North Main in Ottawa has been in business for 13 years, building new residential homes, adding additions and finishing basements, solving commercial structure needs for businesses, and repairing damage left behind from fire or water. When it comes to who you hire for residential and commercial construction needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction at 785-229-5651. KOFO. 
Info, your sports source for East Central Kansas, welcomes you to this broadcast of Ottawa University Braves Basketball, brought to you by Modern Woodman Agent Dale Pearson, Dr. Hale Family Dentistry, Kansas State Bank, Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, the Ottawa Recreation Commission, and by State Farm Insurance Agent Ryan Dispro, Ransom Memorial Hospital, Sutton's Jewelry, Car Star, Messengers Home Furnishings, also by Dale and Son Mortuary, Ottawa University, the Ottawa Herald, Wise Guys Construction, Kramer Pharmacy, Franklin County Chiropractic, and Cosentino's Price Chopper, State Farm Insurance Agent Keith King, Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, People's Bank, Advantage Electric, Quality Structures Incorporated, and Maxwell Chiropractic. Now let's rejoin KOFO's David Potter, courtside for Ottawa University Braves Basketball. And welcome back to Wilson Fieldhouse. We're about to observe a quick moment of silence for the police around the world who are serving in our military. Mitchell at the top of the key. Now, Rockwell, the bullet from the elbow off target. 
He used the automatic from there. It's a little off on that one. That's come back the other way. Lance Carter, the primary ball handler. The Caper. Now they'll work it around. Here's a three by Julian Winton. Off target. Rebounded by Alex Pacey. Pacey will get it over to Hollis Mitchell. Watch the drive. Now kicks it out to tie the strike. Now they'll reset. It's Alex Pacey at the top of the key. Okoronkwo pulls up for a long two. Hits it. We're tied. Two to two here in the early going in the first half. Carter setting up the offense for Tabor. He'll swing it over to Alan Arusha. Back over to Carter. Carter thought about a step back. Now they're going to work it in inside to Devondre Jones. Working against Bollinger. Bollinger, good defense. Forces a miss off the glass. Okoronkwo with the rebound. Sends it over to Titus Rice. Rice, pull-up jumper, fading away. With nothing but that. From near the corner, pulls up and knocks it down. 4-2, great lead. Arusha over to Julian Winston, defended by Okoronkwo. Now is Arusha. Works it inside to Devondre Jones. Nice little move to get it up and in. Ties it back up at four. Up and down we go. Titus Wright thought about the three, shuffled his feet. It's going to be a turnover for the Braves. Ball goes back to Tabor. Wright wanted to take his man, Julio Carey, to the basket. He tried to use a little stutter step move, but did it before he dribbles. So the early turnover gives the Blue Jays the ball back. And here's Carter. Nice job of fighting Perry underneath. He's defended by about the entire defense and has the ball stripped. That's going back the other way. Titus Wright passes up the three. Hollis Mitchell misses his shot, shot from the corner. Now leveled on that rebounding attempt. Tabor has got it. Now they want to go all the way. Finishing through the contact. Is Julian Winston, 6-4. No, oh, no. Hollis Mitchell over to Logan Bollinger will swing it to Okoronkwo. Thought about pulling up for three, now he'll drive. Kick it over to Titus Rice for three. Nailed. Braves go up by one, 7-6. Titus Rice with five and the Braves for seven. Carter at the elbow, pushes Alex Pacey, he's going to be called for the offensive foul. Tries to clear the room with his left arm, knocked Alex Pacey back, and he's called for the foul. Braves up 7-6 here with about 17 to go here in the first half. Hollis Mitchell taking it down over to Okoronkwo. Logan Bollinger being pushed around. Coach Stevens all wants a foul call, won't get one. Now, there might have been a little push going the other way, but that also wasn't called. Hollis Mitchell tries to get it to the basket, but kind of a circus layup, doesn't even come close. And it Perry working his way inside, then passes it off to Devontae Jones, who misses. Tabor gets their own rebound. Now a foul called on Alex Casey, who reaches in as they tried to get it to the cutter with Julian Winton. That's the first foul on OU. Still up seven, six, about three and a half minutes into the game. They work it underneath to Lance Carter, who goes up and in. Hollis Mitchell setting things up for OU. Gets it to Titus Wright. Over to Oka Rockwo. Omega over to Titus Wright. Went up to the three. Went up for the three, wanted to pass at the last second, just kind of let go of the ball. He could pick it back up because it would have been a travel. Nobody else for Ottawa could get to it. Tabor seized on the opportunity, used it for a fast break, and then went down to the other side for the layup and drew the foul from Logan Bollinger. Now, the Braves down 10-7, and we've got Tabor going to the line. Julian Winton with the free throw. Winton, a 67% free throw shooter. And he makes this one. It's a four-point lead. Hollis Mitchell going back the other way. Swings it to Cameron Lindsay. In for Okoronkwo. Jeremiah Brooks also into the game. And Hollis Mitchell stepped on the line as he drove the baseline. 
see another substitution as Nidig is going to come in for Hollis Mitchell. So we've got Nidig, Lindsey, Brooks, Wright, and Bolster on the floor for OU. They're down four. Lance Carter bringing it up to the table. Pass it off to Julian and Winton, who gets it over to Arusha. And now Winton, a wide open three, misses. Offensive rebound to Lance Carter. Carter looking to drive. Now back to out. Now swing it over to Arusha, who's wide open for three. Got it. And the paper, Blue Jays are off to a seven point lead. Four and a half minutes into this game. Cameron Lindsay with the ball at the top of the key. Bollinger swings it back to Lindsay. Lindsay looking to drive. Good defense by Tabor. He's got a pull-up jumper off target. Rebounded by Devondre Jones. Now Lance Carter pulls up with the jumper off target. Rebounded by Rice. Rice loses control of the ball. Loose ball. Nidig dives in for it. It's going to be a held ball. Dual possession. And the ball will stay with the Braves as Tabor makes the substitution. Kyle Baker is going to come on for Lance Carter. Carter doesn't get a lot of breaks. We'll see one early on here. Lindsay throws it into Nidig, who will set up the offense for OU. Nidig picks up his dribble. He'll find Cameron Lindsay way out on the wing. Swings it back to Nidig. Nidig looks to his right, then to his left. Passes to Lindsay, who finds Jeremiah Brooks underneath. Goes up for it. Shot puck expiring as he misses that shot. Tabor gets the rebound. Here's Julian Winton. Taking it over to Arusha at the top of the key, defended by Nidig. Still a man-to-man -man defensive look for the Braves. Baker over to Arusha. Arusha gets it down underneath Devontae Jones. Devontae Jones kicks it back out to Baker. Baker drives. Nice little pass at the last second. He plowed into, I believe it was Jeremiah Brooks. The Braves wanted a charging call. He may have been in the arc underneath the basket. It'll be a blocking call against Jeremiah Brooks and a throw in for Tabor. Pass into Julian Winston way on the on the left wing. Tabor moving left to right, wearing blue. The Braves in white and black, moving right to left. And here's an offensive foul going to be called against Jonathan Gibson, who just checked in for Tabor, a big 6'8 senior out of Grenada. Tried to fight through a screen, was a little too physical, and got the foul call. Here's Cameron Lindsay, passes up the three, drives, now kicks it up to Nidig for an open three. Short, rebounded by Wright. Nice follow through. So the second chance points for the Braves there, pull them to within five. Now, what a rejection by Jeremiah Brooks. Julian Winston went up, tried to draw contact, but instead Brooks with a two-handed block. But now, Braves careless with the ball. It's going back the other way. Here's a three for Winton. He's short. Rebound. Battled. Tabor ends up with it. There's the follow-up by Julian Winton. Scores and makes it a seven-point game again. And Eric Stark gets ready to check in for OU. Nidick sends it over to Cameron Lindsay. Sends it to Titus Wright. Looking for the three. Then passes it over to Lindsay. Bullinger. Tries to drive, and that's going to be a reach on Arusha. Tries to go in for the steal. Stark comes in now. He's coming in for a bullet through. He's not really been a factor so far. Lindsay to inbound underneath the basket. We've got Knight to get the safety foul, fouls, and that's who's back. We'll swing it over to Titus Rice. Fakes the three, gets it over to Knight. Swings it to Cameron Lindsay. Three zone here. Lindsay for three, just short. On target, but shy. A Tabor going back the other way. OU six with man to man defense. Julian Winston hands it off to Baker out on the left wing. He's going to work it inside. Up and off the glass is Jimson Clervis for his first points of the game, and Baker's up nine. 
We get the start. He's going to drive against the big man as it's knocked away for a second. But Stark able to regain control. Now Lindsay driving. Passes it to Nidig. Wide open from the corner. Off target. Nidig is not a great three point shooter. He's missed two wide open attempts. Now a full court pass by Tabor leads to a wide open layup. And Steve all wants to time it out for OU. We'll take a quick 30 second break. Braves down 29. 22-9, eight minutes in. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO. Smart Ottawa shoppers know Costantino's Price Chopper has the best rewards program in town. Only Price Chopper lets you earn points on all your purchases. Visit MyPriceChopper.com and start saving on food or fuel today. Shop Costantino's, your local family-owned grocer since 1948. This is Ryan Disborough, your State Farm Insurance agent in Garnett, providing insurance and financial services, including retirement options, bank loans, life insurance, and annuities. Call and schedule your financial services consultation today at 785-448-1. And welcome back to Wilson Fieldhouse, where Tabor has jumped out to a 20 to 9 lead. Which is coming out of a timeout with just under 12 minutes to go here in the first half. Here's Cameron Lindsay over to Nidig, swings it to Devin Perez. Perez over to Nidig at the top of the key. Eric Stark back out to Perez for three off target. Perez gets his own rebound, tries to drive, and he's going to kick it out to Cameron Lindsay. Lindsay over to Nidig at the top of the key. Back to Lindsay. Now they find Jeremiah Brooks for the jumper. That's off target. And Tabor comes up with the rebound. Now they quickly look to take it back the other way. Carter finds a teammate. He drives to the, bla- drives the baseline, loses control, but it's gathered by Baker, who gives it back to Carter. Now Baker for a long three. Hits it. Tabor's up by 14. Eric Stark at the top of the key. Hands it off to Cameron Lindsay. He'll take a three. He hits the backboard. He's way off target. Tabor looking to go the other direction. Carter takes it over to Baker. Baker drives. The floater, no good. Rebounded by Devin Perez. Perez over to Jacob Nidig. He's out on the left wing. He'll get it over to Eric Stark, to Devin Perez. Perez looks to drive and swings it over to Cameron Lindsay. Lindsay to Nidig. Good job defensively by Tabor. There's just nobody open. Nidig uses a screen, gets into the lane, swings it over to Eric Stark, who has a shot blocked. And now it's Jordan Horstick for Tabor taking it down the court. Now he'll go up for a three. A lot to arc under that one. Misses. That's an over the back call on Jimson Clervius. About halfway into the first half, the Braves down 23 to 9. Stark and Lindsay coming off. Okoronkwo and Bullinger back into the game. Hollis Mitchell still on the bench for OU. Nighting still running the point. Jeremiah Brooks and Devin Perez also in the game. Nighting finds Devin Perez. He's fouled on a three point attempt, almost got it to fall. That's Baker called for the foul for Tabor. Perez to the line for three. Knocks down the first. Devin Perez has only missed one free throw all year, a 94% shooter from the stripe. Doesn't get there a lot, but he's deadly when he does. Shot number two. Is good. And the third shot falls, so he makes it all. It's 23 to 12. Tabor quickly looks to bring it back down. Working it down underneath against Logan Bullinger. Up and in. Nice move by Julio Perry. They score quickly. Nidig swings it over to Devin Perez. He'll find Jeremiah Brooks over to Okoronkwo. Okoronkwo looking to drive. He stuck his arm out. But it will be... It will be Lance Carter called for the foul. 
looked like Okoronko might have used a little arm bar to initiate the contact there, but they'll take the call against Lance Carter. That's his second, so that's a key player for Tabor in some foul trouble. We'll see how long they leave him in. Okoronko hits the first free throw. He's there now in the bonus. He's shooting one and one. And shot number two falls as well. Lead back down to 11. Tabor looking to run with it. They get it down to Devontae Jones. Nice move. Gets it in off the glass. Tabor looks to score early and often, and they've been successful in doing that here. It's a 27-14 lead. Nidig moves it over to Okoronkwo. Finds Logan Bollinger at the top of the key. Now here's Devin Perez. Picks up his dribble. Gets it to Okoronkwo. Uses a screen. Tabor rotates over. They're back to a man-to-man -man look. Okoronkwo driving. Lots of contact. They're going to call a block as Devondre Jones tried to step into his path and draw the charge. Didn't get his feet set. That'll be a blocking foul, and Okoronkwo goes to the line. Titus Rice, Hollis Mitchell, and Alex Hasty all looking to check in. Nidig will come out. Perez will come out, and so will Jeremiah Brooks. 8.59 left on the clock here in the first half. Tabor has jumped out to a 27-14 lead. Tabor keeps one man way, way back on these free throws as they look to try and get a quick outlet pass every time they pull down a defensive rebound. Okoronkwo missed the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Tabor's got the ball now. It's Julian Winton with the ball, swinging it over to Arusha. Arusha finds Winton, thought about the three, he'll take a step in. Now he'll kick it out to Lance Carter. Carter looks to drive. Nice cut by Devondre Jones, but has a shot blocked by Logan Bollinger. Hollis Mitchell lofts it up to Okoronkwo, who looks to drive. Nice move, up and under, and oh, it rims out. A great dig by Okoronkwo, but the ball left spinning on the rim and just spins right off. There's Arusha at the top of the key. We're going to have a foul away from the ball. It's on Okoronkwo for using an arm bar. Team foul number four on OU. Lance Carter to throw it in. He finds Perry. who will leave it there for Arusha. Arusha swoops it over to Winston. Now here's Carter, finds the wide open Perry. Passes up to three, starts to drive, then kicks it back out. Lance Carter out on the left wing. Working against Okoronkwo. He'll drive the baseline up and in. Nice move by Lance Carter. Taper up 15. Hollis Mitchell looking to run. Gets it over to Okoronkwo. There's Bollinger swings it over to Rice. Rice into the lane. Finds Hasty out to Okoronkwo. He's got an open three. Off target. Rebounded by Perry. Taper taking it back the other direction. Winton over to Lance Carter. Carter trying to set up the offense, working against Okoronkwo. And here's Julian Winton out on the left wing, defended by Wright. Takes it into the lane, now dumps it off to Jones, who kicks it out to Perry for a wide open three, off target, rebounded by Bollinger. Bollinger gets it over to Titus Rice on the right wing. Here's Alex Hasty working it into the lane. Now kicks it out to Hollis Mitchell. Mitchell finds Bollinger at the top of the key. Takes a step in. Here's a fadeaway turnaround off target. Lance Carter pushing the pace. Here's a foul away from the ball. It's going to be a charge on Devondre Jones trying to set up position against Logan Bollinger. Knocks him to the ground. The ball's going to go the other way. Logan Bollinger's going to step off the court now. Eric Stark will come on in his place. We'll also see the big man, 6'8", Jonathan Gibson, reporting for Tabor, coming in for Devondre Joe. Hollis Mitchell bringing it down over to Alex Hasty. Hasty works it in, finds Ruddy Rice cutting along the baseline, going up for the slam. Braves still down 13, though. Carter looking to drive. Kicks it out to Perry for an open three. Got it. The big man, Julio Perry, hits the three. He's not afraid to shoot it from outside. That's his 40-second two-point attempt. Now Braves turn it over. And 
Julian Winston went up for the dunk. Okoronkwo knocked the ball out, but also got some arm. And he's going to be called for the foul. That's foul number two on him. He's going to go to the bench. Cameron Lindsay will come in. And Julian Winston will go to the line for a pair of free throws where he shoots 67%. Free throw is good. Lead pushed out to 17. Went in for free throw number two. And rims out. Rebound to Hollis Mitchell. 6.20 to go in the first quarter, first half. Tabor leading this one 33-16. Ottawa struggling to score here in the early going. Lindsay swings it over to Mitchell, over to Stark, finds out Casey right under the basket, goes up and in. Casey's on the board for the first time today. Now Tabor looking to run. That's going to be a block called on Eric Stark, who tried to draw the charge, but sort of stepped into it, didn't really establish position. That's team foul number six on the Braves, so the next one will put Tabor into the bonus. Carter passes it in to Perry, way away from the basket, gets it over to Carter, just behind the timeline, defended by Titus Wright. Here's Arusha, swings it over to Winton for a wide open three, he's got it. Saber up by eight. And Titus Rice out on the wing, looking to get it in. Now here's Hasty from the side, misses. Rebound pulled down by Carter. Five and a half to go in the first half. Carter working against Cameron Lindsay. The Braves have gone to a zone look. Two down low, three up top. Lindsay and Jones in space. Now here's Arusha. Passes up to three, gets it into the lane, kicks it out to Lance Carter. Carter moves over to the top of the key. Perry for another three, misses this one. Hasty with the rebound. Hollis Mitchell looking to put. Push the tempo, gets it over to Cameron Lindsay. Lindsay back over to Mitchell. Now Hasty Mitchell, wide open three, puts it up. Got it. Braves cracked the 20 point mark. It's 36 21. Paper's still up by double digits. Lance Carter brings it up. Swings it over to Arusha. Back to Carter. Here's Perry. Out to Arusha, passes up to three. Here's Carter driving on Hollis Mitchell. Pushed Hollis Mitchell back while he drove. That's foul number three on Lance Carter. And they're going to have to stop in Kyle Baker for Carter. And Carter probably won't play again for the first half as he's got three fouls. And that will help the Braves out. Tabor missing their best player. Tabor in a zone, also a 3-2. Here's Titus Rice driving. Goes up, misses from short range. Perry with the rebound. He'll get it out to Arusha. Over to Wint and back to Arusha. Perry at the top of the key. Passes up the three, goes to Arusha. There's Winton looking to drive, almost lost it. Arusha swings over to Baker for three. Off target, and the rebound goes to Cameron Lindsay. Hollis Mitchell brings it up the court for the Braves. Finds Titus Rice out on the wing. Back to Mitchell. Swings it to Cameron Lindsay. Lindsay passes up to three. Over to Hollis Mitchell. Back to Lindsay. Back to Mitchell. Now they'll get it into the paint to Eric Stark. Finds Hasty underneath. Swings out to Hollis Mitchell. Wide open for three. Misses, but Cameron Lindsay with the offensive board. Here's Stark from the free throw line. Misses. Rebound by Perry. They'll get it over to Arusha, looking to push the tempo. Blocked by Rice, but they're going to call him for a foul. Two shots upcoming for Arusha. Alan Arusha doesn't get to the line often. He's pretty efficient when he does get there. 10 of 14 for the year. Free throw is off target. Bollinger will check back in for Stark now. He's been very quiet today so far. No points scored in the, here in the first half so far. Free throw number two for Arusha. Up and in. 
16-point game. Hollis Mitchell to bring it down for OU. Three and a half left on the clock here in the first half. Lindsay finds Rice down low, kicks it back out to Lindsay. He'll swing it to Mitchell, back to Lindsay. Now Lindsay drives, gets up, tries to finish through some contact. A quick outlet pass going back the other way and an easy layup for Tabor. Nobody getting back quickly enough for OU, and Tabor has burned him a couple times now on transition points. Here's Bullinger from the elbow, kicks it out to Titus Rice for three, in and out, Bullinger, offensive rebound, looks to go back up with it, gets the ball. 2.45 to go in the first half, it's 39-23. Tabor forced to put Lance Carter on the bench with three fouls. The Braves trying to use that as an opportunity to eat back into this lead, but they haven't been able to so far. Julian Winton with the ball at the top of the key, gets it to Perry, kicks it back out to Winton, and here's Kyle Baker. Swings it back over to Winton to Arusha. Now down low. Gibson almost has the pass stolen. And here's Winton driving. The floater falls. Tabor up to 41 points now. Hollis Mitchell driving back the other way. Kicks it out to Titus Rice out on the wing. Tries to set up a screen. Nobody comes. Here's Lindsay kicking over to Hollis Mitchell. Pull up jumper off target. Rebounded by Perry going back the other way. Tabor looks to run. Arusha now slows things up, gets it over to Winton. Now Winton looking to drive, kicks it back out to Perry. Baker with a wide open three, off target. Rebounded by Perry. Arusha with a wide open three. Misses. Rebounded by Winton, but he loses track of it. It goes out of bounds. Looks like it was last touched by Hollis Mitchell. So Tabor will retain possession still. Arusha to throw it in for the Blue Jays. Gets it to Winton. Now here's Baker at the top of the key. Back over to Winton. Stolen, almost stolen by Hollis Mitchell. It couldn't quite rein it in after getting a hand on it. Winton setting things up from behind the timeline. He'll get it over to Arusha. Arusha sends it in to Perry. Now here's Baker getting it into Gibson. The big man working against Tasty. A little too physical working against Hasty. Hasty as he tried to clear some room and knocked him to the ground. Offensive foul. Ball goes the other way. That's foul number two on the big man, Gibson. Winton is going to come out as Jordan Horstick checks in for him, the junior from just down the road in Richmond at Central Heights. Hasty to throw it in to Hollis Mitchell. Less than a minute and a half to go. Ottawa finds themselves buried by 18 here in the first half. Mitchell over to Bollinger. Pulls up for three. Oh, looks good, but just a little too much on it. Rebound by Tabor. Baker brings it down. Sends it over to Arusha. Finds Perry. Perry takes it to the basket. Off the backboard. No good. Hasty with the rebound. Hasty swings it over to Mitchell, over to Titus Rice. Rice thought about pulling up. Now they get it into Bollinger at the elbow. Bollinger swings it back out to Cameron Lindsay. Hollis Mitchell sends it over to Titus Rice, back into Bollinger from the elbow, pulls up, knocks it down. Good ball, ball movement by the Braves. Find Bollinger in a position where he's very adept at scoring, which is right there at the elbow on the free throw line. Five second discrepancy between the shot clock and the game clock. So Tabor can't quite run it all the way down, but they will run it down as far as they can. Arusha holding the ball out near the timeline, passes it over to Perry, out on the wing, working against Hollis Mitchell. Bollinger comes over to help. Now they kick out. Now here is the big man, Jimson Clervia, scoring underneath. Three seconds left on the game clock. Hollis Mitchell with the floater off target. And that's going to end the first half. This one was all Tabor start to finish. We'll go into halftime with the Blue Jays up over the Braves, 43-25. We'll be right back with the Advantage Electric Halftime Show here on KOFO. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. 
with opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations. We all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. Community journalism is thriving at the Ottawa Herald. Three days a week in print and every day online, the Herald's award-winning staff covers the news that matters to you. Breaking news, sports, events, and so much more. Just as the Herald has done for more than 140 years. Call 242-4700 to subscribe today or find us online at www.ottawaherald.com, on Facebook, or download our app. Since 1944, families of Franklin County have called Dingle and Son Mortuary and Crematory in their time of need. Why? Because of the peace of mind received knowing that Dingle and Son will take charge and exceed expectations. Visit DingleMortuary.com. People's Bank in Ottawa is proud to support our area sports team. From People's Bank Field at Ottawa University to our Bucks for Buckets promotion and more, we believe our local sports programs are an investment in our future. Best of luck to all the teams from all of us at People's Bank. Member FDIC. To protect your family and plan for your financial future, get to know your modern woodman agent. Hello, I'm Dale Pearson, your modern woodman agent in Ottawa, Kansas. Call me today at 242-6566. Modern Woodman of America. Touching lives, securing futures. Quality Structures Incorporated in Richmond is proud to sponsor this KOFO sports broadcast. They know experience matters on the court and when it comes to your building needs. Visit qualitystructures.com and let them put their years of experience in constructing post frame buildings to work for you. Sports, information, and entertainment in East Central Kansas. KOFO K279CS Ottawa, where keeping you informed comes first. And welcome back to Wilson Fieldhouse here in Ottawa. Where the Braves are down to Tabor, 43 to 25. And this is the Advantage Electric Halftime Show here on KOFO. Whether you're building or remodeling, residential or commercial, get the electric advantage for your project. Advantage Electric, 229 North Main in Ottawa. Call 418 1218. So again, in the score, 43 25. And when you look at the stat sheet, it is. No mystery at all why that is the case. As Tabor is shooting 53% from the floor, and the Braves are shooting just 27% from the floor. Tabor is only 4 of 13 from outside, so they haven't been doing it from the three-point line. They've been doing it from inside. If you just look at their two-point shots, they've hit 14 of 19, which is an almost impossible 74% conversion rate on those two-point shots. So that... I guess the good news, if you're the Braves, is that that's unsustainable, <laughs> and you can't expect Tabor to continue hitting 74% of their shots from inside, but the bad news is that you're down by 18, and you've got a whole lot of ground to make up, and they're going to have to find a way to get a few more of their own shots to start falling. The Braves, just 9 of 33 from the floor, 2 of 12 from outside the arc, that's just 17%, and then just... 7 of 21 for 33% from inside the arc. So even from two-point range, they're only seeing a third of their shots fall. Again, that's compared to 74% of the Blue Jays' shots. So it's really been a matter of defense and offensive efficiency here. A couple of uh, a couple of those shots, and part of the reason for the big lead for Tabor is that they've been able to sneak into some quick transition points where... They send, they don't really focus hard on crashing the defensive board. They'll send their wings back quickly as soon as they put the ball or as soon as Ottawa puts the ball up. So they're willing to give up a couple offensive rebounds here and there if it means creating those transition opportunities as they've got wings running down the other side of the court. So if they do get that defensive rebound, they can throw a full, full length pass all the way down to the other side and if Ottawa hasn't dropped anyone back defensively, then it results in an easy layup. And we've seen a couple of those already for Tabor. So the Braves will have to make some adjustments to where when their shot goes up, they at least have somebody tracking back to play defense on the Tabor players who are streaking back in the other direction. Otherwise, you're going to give up a layup line anytime you miss the shot and give up the defensive rebound. And the frustrating thing for Ottawa is even though that is how Tabor handles the uh, 
handles their wings when the shot goes up as they send them coming back instead of helping out on the defensive board. Ottawa has not been able to convert that strategy into any or into any uh, significant number of offensive rebounds. They've only got four offensive boards on 24 missed shots, so only one out of every six shots has been has led to an offensive board for the Braves. And offensive rebounding is so important that that's another thing they'll have to look to try and fix in the locker room during halftime. We'll go ahead and take a break and then be back with more of the Advantage Electric Halftime Show. You're listening to OU Basketball here on KOFO. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. Kramer Pharmacy, downtown Ottawa, hopes you're enjoying this KOFO sports broadcast and wishes all the area teams good luck this season. Call Kramer Pharmacy today and ask about their convenient MedSync program that allows you to have all your prescriptions filled at the same time each month. Call 242-2055. Eric Price and his staff at the Lamb Roberts Funeral Homes are proud to sponsor this KOFO sports broadcast and honored to help so many families in the community with compassionate care when it's needed most. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, Ottawa, Baldwin City, and Overbrook. At State Farm, our goal is to help people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. This is State Farm Agent Keith King in Ottawa. Let me help you protect what's most important to you. Give my office a call at 785-242-9435 or stop by at 111 South Main Street in Ottawa. Technology. Mobile banking. I totally heart my bank. Kansas State Bank. A better way to bank with community people you know. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. This is Dr. Weston Zinner at Franklin County Chiropractic in Ottawa. We hope you're enjoying the game and remind you that whether you're an athlete or a weekend warrior, we can help relieve your pain for a better performance. Call 785-242-9393 for an appointment. When quality matters, choose the best. Choose Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling. Call today and make sure your heating and cooling system is ready for the season at 785-242-9273. Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, maintaining your comfort for over 30 years. And welcome back to the Advantage Electric Halftime Show here from Wilson Fieldhouse in Ottawa, where Braves basketball is not having the best day. They're they're coming off of three times in one week where both the men's and women's teams got victories in the same day. As uh, Thursday of last week, they both got the victory. Then turned around on Saturday, both teams beat Bethel. And then just two days ago on Thursday, both teams went down to Sterling and got the win. But the uh, women's team was a tough time against Baylor. They really pulled that game to make it neck and neck in the fourth quarter. But they were, they were able to pull away late and get the victory. And now the men's team with a rough go of it here down 43-25 at halftime. And again, we went over their shooting numbers for the first half where Tabor has a huge, a huge advantage. One of the few areas where Ottawa does have an advantage is in fouls. If they can continue to draw fouls, they can get Tabor into a tough position where their best player, Lance Carter, had to sit for the last four minutes or so with three fouls. They also have three different players in Devondre Jones, Jimson Clervius, and their biggest player, Jonathan Gibson, the six foot eight big man, all have two fouls. So if they can continue to take the ball at the Blue Jays and force some more fouls, they can get some of their better players onto the bench and maybe start to do some damage that way. We'll take another quick break and be back with more of the Advantage Electric Halftime Show from Ottawa. You're listening to Braves Basketball on KOFO. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. 
This is Dr. Adam Maxwell of Maxwell Chiropractic, serving you with chiropractic and wellness care at 225 South Walnut in Ottawa. Call 785-893-8272 for an appointment. As a former cyclone, I wish this year's teams good luck, and I'm proud to be a supporter of Ottawa Cycling Athletics. Kramer Pharmacy, downtown Ottawa, hopes you're enjoying this KOFO Sports broadcast and wishes all the area teams good luck this season. Call Kramer Pharmacy today and ask about their convenient MedSync program that allows you to have all your prescriptions filled at the same time each month. Call 242-2055. Hi, I'm Dalton Evans. I'm 10 years old and happy to report that I've never had a cavity. Thanks to brushing twice a day and two cleanings a year at Dr. Hale Family Dentistry. Schedule your family's appointment today by calling 242-1800. This is Lou Baker at CarStar Ottawa. Our technicians are highly trained, iCar certified repair experts. We provide continued education for our employees and the latest equipment to ensure the highest quality repairs. We work hard at staying your number one collision repair shop. one 800 Car Star. Relax, we'll take it from here. Ransom Memorial Hospital Cancer Care, your cancer fighting team, is open and accepting patients. For a personalized care experience, call 785 229 8203. Online at ransom.org or at 1301 South Main Street, Ottawa. RMH Cancer Care, close to home, close to your heart. Eric Price and his staff at the Lamb Roberts Funeral Homes are proud to sponsor this KOFO sports broadcast and honored to help so many families in the community with compassionate care when it's needed most. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, Ottawa, Baldwin City, and Overbrook. And welcome back to the last segment of the Advantage Electric Halftime Show here from Wilson Fieldhouse, where again, it's an 18-point game. Tabor leading the Braves, who are coming off that four-game win streak, 43-25. to Braves will need to turn things around quickly here in the second half to try and keep that win streak going against the tough Tabor team, who's receiving votes for the top 25 right now. One important thing to note when you're looking at Tabor's numbers so far, they've made 18 shots and they have 13 assists. So they've done an excellent job of working the ball around and and putting the team in good position to shoot. That's something that, well, we've already listed off a few things that Ottawa's going to have to work on in half or uh, during halftime in the locker room, but you can add that one to the list is trying to impede the passing lanes a little bit for Tabor and trying to get a hand on some of those passes or at least shut off some of those passes down low so the Blue Jays aren't getting the ball in such good position to score. Now Ottawa does have six assists on their nine shots so when they've made their shots it's been the result of an assist two-thirds of the time but nine, only nine of 33 from the floor that's 27% so part of it is just shots not simply not falling for OU. We'll go ahead and take one last break and then be back with the second half. You've been listening to the Advantage Electric Halftime Show here on KOFO. You say you've always dreamed of a custom-made gold piece, but had never taken the time to make it a reality. What are you waiting for? Sutton's Jewelry Bench Jeweler Phil Sutton can help guide you through the process just in time for Christmas, but stop in soon. Deadline for customized jewelry consultations is December 9th. Sutton's Jewelry, whether it's a gift for someone special or a treat for yourself, make sure you check out our holiday specials throughout the store. 207 South Main, Ottawa. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. The Ottawa Shopper has a new look with new features. Never miss your favorite TV show with The TV Guides. Find area church times and the popular Kids Talk About God column on the church pages. And get useful employment tips from our weekly Q&A advice column. Call 242-4700 to get your Franklin County address added to our subscription list for free or pick up the Ottawa Shopper at multiple racks around town. 
That's 242-4700. Anyone can call themselves a construction company, slap a sign on the side of their truck, and drive around town looking for work. Is that who you want to hire? No, you're smarter than that. Wise Guys Construction at 108 North Main in Ottawa has been in business for 13 years, building new residential homes, adding additions and finishing basements, solving commercial structure needs for businesses, and repairing damage left behind from fire or water. When it comes to who you hire for residential and commercial construction needs, be wise. Call Wise Guys Construction at 785-229-5651. And we are back in Wilson Fieldhouse and just underway in the second half. The Braves have an 18-point deficit to try and overcome here in the last 20 minutes. The Braves now going left to right. Tabor going right to left. There's Winton for Tabor going off the glass and getting it in. And this is the biggest lead of the game now for the Blue Jays at 20 as they lead 45-25. Alex Hasty at the top of the key finds Logan Bullinger down underneath. Nice job of getting in and getting off the glass for two points. Lance Carter back into the game. He's got three fouls, so if they could get a fourth one on him, that would be helpful as he's already got six points, five assists, and he's really the engine that makes this Tabor offense go. Carter with the ball back out on the wing. They'll bring it to the top, swing it over to Winton. Now back to Carter, thought about the three. Now he's going to take a step in, stay for the jumper. He's off target. Rebound tracked down by Hasty. Here's Hollis Mitchell looking to run. He'll get it over to Titus Rice. Rice right out on the wing, drives, reverse layup. Nice job. 45-29, a 16-point game now. Here's a wide open three for Winston. Off target, though. Hasty's got the rebound. Back on the other end. Rice had a beautiful reverse layup just now, just a little finger roll off the glass as he drove the baseline. Now Rice again pulls up for the jumper, off target to the right, and it'll go out of bounds. 18-31 left, it's a 16-point game. Lance Carter bringing it down. He'll send it over to Arusha on the left wing. Now Carter looking to drive. Defended by Hasty. He's fouled. Shooting foul. So Carter will go to the line for a pair. He's a 65% free throw shooter. First free throw is up and good. A lot of bark on that one. Swish. Right through the net. 17 point game now. Shot number two. Boy, he gets a lot of arc on those free throws. Both of them fall. It's an 18 point game. Here's Bollinger in the lane. Nice, Nice little turnaround hook. Gets it to fall. Leads back down to 16. Winton swings it over to Carter, getting it down low to Devondre Jones, working against Bollinger. Bullying him around down there, getting position and going right up with it. 49-31, 18-point game. Bollinger swings it to Rice and sets the screen. Rice now driving the baseline. They're going to call a charge. It looks like their feet got tangled up, and Jones actually tripped him up. They're going to call a charge against Titus Rice. But any time you lower his shoulder, which he did, and there's contact, you risk getting called for the charge. So that's something you have to be aware of if you're right. There's Lance Carter on the other end, swinging out to Wimpton for three. Short, rebounded by Bollinger. Hollis Mitchell taking it back the other way. No passing lane, has to hand it off to Bollinger for three. Air ball, missed everything. Bollinger has been getting better at knocking down that three-pointer from the top of the key, and Mitchell just kind of turned around and handed it off to him and let him get a wide-open shot, but that was well short of the rim and just went out of bounds. Here's Carter pulling up for three, way off target. Titus Rice pulls down the rebound, gets over to Mitchell. Mitchell looking to drive, now steps out. Off to Bollinger, Okoronkwa on the wing, looking to drive. He traps himself under the basket and gets it stolen. Lance Carter... Swings it over to Arusha, over to Winton. 
Thought about pulling the trigger from three-point range. Now swings it back out. Is Arushay taking over to Perry for three? Too hard. Knocked out of bounds on the rebound attempt by Tabor. So the Braves will get a throw in under their own basket. Lead still 18. They haven't been able to cut into it since halftime. Hollis Mitchell lets the ball roll over half court, picks it up, and gets it over to Hasty. Hasty looking to drive, gets to the rim, lays it in. Nice job by Ox Hasty, finding the lane and dropping it into the basket. 16 point game still, 16 and a half minutes to go. Devondre Jones gets it over to Winton. Now here's Arusha getting it down low to Perry. Perry kicks it back out. Jones. Now here's. Jones with a spin move, trying to get room, and that's going to be a charge. And he's spinning around left and right, and eventually just spins right into Logan Bollinger's chest, knocking him back. That's going to be foul number three on Devondre Jones, so he and Lance Carter both playing with three. And it looks like they're going to sub on the big guy, Jonathan Gibson, who's got two fouls of his own. For Jones at the next dead ball. Here's Alex Hasty. Kicks it out to Okoronkwo, Okoronkwo who barely reeled in that pass. No spin move. Goes up with it, but has it knocked away out of bounds. Last touch by Tabor. Devondre Jones is going to come off for Gibson. Okoronkwo throws it into Bollinger. Quick jump shot. Silky smooth release on that. Bollinger is just so fun to watch when he pulls up for those 10 to 12 foot jumpers. Just seems like he's automatic from that range. And the lead is down to 14 for the first time since uh, sometime to go in the first half. Seems like it's been going between 16 and 20 for quite a while now. So finally cut, able to cut into that lead a little bit. 15 and a half to go here in the second half. Here's Carter looking to drive, now kicks it out. Perry passes up the open three, gets it into Gibson, the big man, six foot eight, working against Bollinger. Nice little turn and hook shot, makes it a 16 point game again. Now here's Okoronkwo looking to drive, too hard off the glass, rebounded by Perry, and it's going the other way. Winton gets into the lane, has it blocked partially by Bollinger. Now Bollinger and Gibson are fighting for it, goes out of bounds, last touched by Gibson, Braves ball. Cameron Lindsay to check in for Okoronkwo. And Jeremiah Brooks to come in for Alex Hasty. Braves looking a little livelier, but they just haven't been able to make any significant cuts into this lead. Hollis Mitchell setting things up. Tabor stays in the 3-2 zone. Here's Cameron Lindsay swinging it out to Titus Rice. Rice swings it back over to Bollinger. Bollinger hands it off to Cameron Lindsay. Back to Bollinger from the free throw line. Got it. Another automatic jumper for Bollinger. Makes it a 14-point game again. He's got 12. Leads the team in scoring today. Winton over to Perry. Skip pass over to Carter. A little high. Carter barely brought it in. And here's the big man, Gibson, working against Jeremiah Brooks. That's a charge. Lowered his shoulder and knocked Brooks to the ground, trying to get position. Foul number three called on Gibson. So that's three different Blue Jays with three fouls. Here's Hollis Mitchell sending it over to Cameron Lindsay. Now swung back to the other side. Here's Titus Rice driving, tries to lay it up and in around a big man. Can't quite get it to fall. Here's Winton. Nice little reverse layup. He gets it to go. Back to a 16-point game. Hollis Mitchell running, sends it over to Titus Rice. Wants to drive, loses track of the ball. Now it's a loose ball. Logan Bollinger's got it. And that's going to be a foul on Jim Sinclair, who is trying to dive on Logan Bollinger to get that loose ball. Sometimes you see referees just let that go. Anytime it's, anytime it's a loose ball, you can just kind of dive on whoever to try and get to it. But Bollinger had established possession of it there. Here's a throw into Bollinger, a quick little release on the jump shot. This time he misses it. Usually automatic from the elbow. 
nice pass by Carter, getting into Arusha on the backdoor cut, pushes the lead back to up to 18. Here's Cameron Lindsay for three, off target, rebound by Gibson. Tabor's taking it the other way, can push the lead back up to 20 with a basket here. Carter left his feet, didn't shoot though, but now Ottawa tries a long pass and there's nobody on the other end of it, so it's tracked down by Tabor. 18-point lead, Winton with the ball at the top of the key, working on Bullinger, pulls up for a long two, got it. And Tabor's lead is back up to 20, 57-37. Nydig is back into the game for Hollis Mitchell. They'll bring it down, pass it off to Rice. Now they swing it over to Cameron Lindsay. Here's Jeremiah Brooks on the baseline, fouled by Gibson. That's going to be number four on him. So Gibson likely to come out of the game now, but... He's not been a significant contributor, so that's not the one they want to get into foul trouble. Gibson, in fact, will actually stay in the game. Well, no, now they'll send him off. If they can get Carter up to four fouls, that would be a more important development. Here's the inbound over Logan Bollinger's head. He's able to track it down, get it over Devin Perez for three, off target, rebounded by Perry. Sabre looking to push the tempo. Going back the other way, dumps it off to Carter. No look pass. Carter lays it in. And it's the biggest lead of the game for Tabor. 22. Cameron Lindsay pulls up for three. Knocks it down on the other end. And makes it a 19 point lead. Carter bringing it down. Lindsay defending it. Braves back into a man to man defense. Lindsay went for the steal, got his hand on it, but Carter able to track it back down. Now here's Terry at the three-point line over to Winston for three. Out. Gibson got the offensive rebound. Fights his way up and in. Twenty-one point lead for Tabor. Cameron Lindsay thought about the three, passes it into Jeremiah Brooks. Little turnaround come from misses. Tabor taking it back the other way. Winton pulls up for two. Got it. Tabor up 63 to 40. Nydig bringing it down. Swings it over to Cameron Lindsay. Lindsay finds Logan Bollinger. Kicks it out to Nydig. Wide open for three. Passes it up. Now he'll swing it out to Cameron Lindsay. He'll go for three. Off target. Too, too strong on the attempt from the corner. Tabor with a 23-point lead. Paris, or uh, excuse me, not Paris, Perry is fouled by Cameron Lindsay. And now Perry will go to the line for two. Blue Jays already up 23. This is the first. Perry is a 73% free throw shooter. Bollinger comes out to get a quick break. Eric Stark in his place. Second free throw is good. It's the biggest lead of the game for Tabor, 24 points. The Braves have just not been able to hang in this one at all. As Tabor's offense continues to fire on all cylinders and the Braves continue to struggle to score. Here's Jeremiah Brooks fouls as he goes up for a close range shot. Off target, so he'll shoot two. Eleven nineteen remaining. Brooks first free throw is good. Sixty four to forty one the score. Jeremiah Brooks, the second free throw short. Nida gets the offensive rebound. Gets it out to Lindsay. Lindsay looks to drive. It's going to be an offensive foul on Stark. And the ball goes back the other way. Foul away from the ball. Julian Winton will bring the ball down the court for Tabor. Swings it over to Jordan Horstick, who's back in the game for. The Blue Jays, Winston, calling for a pick. Now swings it over to Baker. Baker sends it inside to Clervius. Has his pass stolen by Lindsay. 
And now Perry pulls Stark to the ground going for the loose ball. He'll be called for the foul. Team foul number six on Tabor. So the next one will send the Braves to the free throw line. Knight again at point guard. Get it into Stark at the top of the post. Now here's Lindsay. Gets it back over to Nidig at the top of the key. Stark swings it over to Cameron Lindsay. Wide open for three. Nice shot. Got the three. And we'll have a quick timeout. We'll take 30 seconds of our own. It's 64-44. You're listening to Braves basketball on KOFO. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. are up by 20 over the Ottawa Braves. Ten and a half minutes to go in the game here. Tabor with the ball. There's a pull-up jumper by Horstick. It's off target. Rebound. Goes to Jake Nidig. Nidig bringing it down. He'll get it over to Jeremiah Brooks. Goes immediately to the basket. And one if he lays it in. Jeremiah Brooks with an athletic move to get to the rim. He took off from outside the paint and was able to get right to the basket and lay it in through the contact. Now he'll get one free throw attempt. And it's in and out. Lead stays 18. Tabor continues to look to run. They waste no time getting the ball down the down, down the court looking for opportunities to score. And there's Alex Arnold, who's in the game for the first time today, laying that one in with virtually no contest for the Braves. Nidig uses a screen. Now kicks it over to Eric Stark. Stark works it to Jeremiah Brooks. Brooks drives the baseline. And there's going to be a foul called against Horstick, who kind of gave him a bump trying to push him over the baseline as he drove. So that's Team foul number eight, and Jeremiah Brooks is going to go to the line for a one-and-one. Free throw number one is good. Free throw number two, off the front of the rim, but Eric Stark gets the offensive fours. Nidig with a wide open three, with nothing but net on that one, and the lead is back down to 17. Nine and a half minutes to go. Here's Baker, guarded by Devin Perez. Swings it over to Horstick. We'll get into Arusha, defended by Cameron Lindsay. Back over to Horstick. Now Arusha. Has it stolen by Cameron Lindsay. Fast break. He's fouled from behind going up for the layup. He'll go to the line. Lindsay, a 50% free throw shooter on the year. He's only attempted 10 coming into today's game. He could cut the lead to 14 if he hits them both. He's got the first. Seven points now for Cameron Lindsay. We'll try and make it eight. And it's good. 66-52, the Braves making some inroads here against this lead. Now going to more of a full court pressure defense. And there is Devin Perez trying to draw the charge. He's going to be called for the block as Alex Arnold goes up hard to the basket, lays it in, finishes through contact. So he'll get, go to the line to try and make it a three-point play. And that's actually Jim Sinclairby instead of Alex Darnold. So 
the lead quickly back up to 16 and could be 17 after the free throw. Clairvius, the free throw is good. Kind of a strange shooting motion. Kind of a little twist on the ball out of his hand, but goes right through the net and the lead is back up to 17. So every time it looks like OU is cutting into this lead, Tabor has a response. Bollinger fakes the three, now drives, kicks it out to Cameron Lindsay, pulls up for three, got it. As the Braves want a timeout, they've got the lead to 14 again. We'll take 30 seconds. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. as many as 24, but now the Braves have fought back and gained 10 on them. They're down only 14. Down to 8.42 remaining here in the second half, but they seem to be gaining a little momentum and feeling a little better offensively. Cameron Lindsay's hit two threes here in the last few possessions to come up with six big points. He's up to 12 on the day, and he's or excuse me, 11 on the day, just one shy of Logan Bollinger for the team high. Devontae Jones back into the game. So is Lance Carter for Tabor. There's a pass over to Baker on the left wing. Defended by Perez. He'll swing it over to Arusha. Back to Baker. It's stolen. Dide comes up with it. Gets it to him. Perez streaking down the corner. Lays it in. Unguarded. So a 12-point game now. They're clawing their way back in. Baker with the ball again. They trap him, but he gets the ball down low. He tries to run over Jeremiah Brooks, and Brooks is going to get called for the foul. Brooks is staring at the referee, wide-eyed in disbelief, doesn't know how he's called for the foul. It was the big man, Jonathan Gibson, who's playing with four fouls, who threw his weight around to clear some room down there and knocked Jeremiah Brooks to the floor. But the foul goes the other direction. Jones working into Lance Carter down low. He puts his shoulder down, knocks Nidig to the ground, and Nidig is going to be called for a block. And the crowd and the bench can't believe it. Two straight fouls called on the Braves in situations where Tabor is just lowering their shoulder and plowing them to the ground. When you're in a legal defensive position and the offensive player lowers his shoulder, to try and clear space. That is the definition of an offensive foul, and we've seen two straight called on the defense here. And the coach asking the referees what they want the Braves to do differently, because I'm not sure what else they can do. That's legal guarding position, and they're getting a shoulder put into their chest, and the Braves getting called for the fouls. It's a 14-point lead after both the free throws go in. This Devin Perez down to three from the top of the key down to an 11 point lead Baker with the ball out on the right wing he is loose with the ball he's turned it over a couple of times now he just flings up a wild shot that misses Okoronkwo pulls up misses the jumper Carter's got the rebound not the shot they were looking for so early in the shot clock he pulled up from about 18 feet out it's not an efficient shot at any point certainly not within five or six seconds of the possession starting Here's Lance Carter as Titus Rice and Cameron Lindsay are ready to check back in. And there's a layup by Devondre Jones, pushes the lead back to 13. Nidig finds Logan Bollinger underneath. He goes up with it, fouled, and that's going to be five on Gibson, I believe. That is number five on Gibson, and he will be disqualified. So the 
biggest player on the team for Tabor at 6'8", Jonathan Gibson, is disqualified. So he has not been a huge contributor. He is a big body who's been able to throw his weight a little around, a little down in the post today. So they'll be missing that from here on out. Logan Bollinger to the line, where he's missed only five free throws all year. He gets the first. It's a 12-point game, 7 8 to go. He has 13. Make it 14 for number 14. He hits the second. It's back to an 11-point lead. Gaber breaks the press. Now they're looking to score quick. Devondre Jones goes up with it and scores on the other end. Bollinger tried to contest the shot, but he, Devondre Jones had snuck in behind the defense. Bullinger to go up for three, off target. Casey fighting for the rebound, tries to save it, can't do it. Going to go the other way. Thirteen point lead. Braves are going to back off and go to a half court defense. Carter bringing it down for the Blue Jays. And now they lose track of it, stolen by Cameron Lindsay, and Arusha reaches out and fouls him to prevent the fast break. So now Cameron Lindsay goes to the line. We'll try and cut this down to an 11-point lead. Lindsay's first free throw, swish. He's got 12. The lead is 12. Braves have battled back from down by as many as 24. They've cut the lead in half, but still have not gotten it down into single digits. The second free throw falls, so it's an 11-point game. Now the Braves go back to full court pressure. Now Tabor breaks the press. Carter looking to take it to the rim. Now finds DeAndre Jones with the cut from the side. Nobody defending him. So Tabor is doing a really efficient job of breaking the press and finding the open man. And Titus Rice dribbles it off his leg and it goes out of bounds. And it seems like every time Ottawa cuts this lead and makes some progress, we see a negative play going back the other way. Quick 30 second timeout, Braves down 13. You're listening to KOFO Sports. People's Bank in Ottawa is proud to support our area sports teams. From People's Bank Field at Ottawa University to our Bucks for Buckets promotion and more, we believe our local sports programs are an investment in our future. Best of luck to all the teams from all of us at People's Bank. Member FDIC. At State Farm, our goal is to help people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. This is State Farm agent Keith King in Ottawa. Let me help you protect what's most important to you. Give my office a call at 785-242-9435 or stop by at 111 South Main Street in Ottawa. Sports, information, and entertainment in East Central Kansas. KOFO K279CS Ottawa, where keeping you informed comes first. And we're back in Wilson Fieldhouse. We just saw a quick foul on the inbound to Titus Rice. Got a little overzealous for the steal and sort of fell over the top of Arusha. So Arusha will go to the line for one and one on the other side. And Rice is going to come out for a Mecca Okoronkwo. Probably hear a couple words from the coach. Arusha's first shot is off target, but the giveaway, the offensive rebound, and Terry just puts it right back in. 15-point lead again. Cameron Lindsay swings it over to Logan Bullinger. Bullinger drives, gets it to go. Nice take by Bullinger. Cuts it back to 13. So the Braves won't go away, but they it always just seems to be an opposite and equal reaction every time they make a positive play. Carter misses the layup, gets his own rebound, and puts it in. Just like that, they make the nice play and then force Carter to miss, and then Carter gets his own rebound and scores anyway. And now foul called on Winton as Nidig went to drive, lost the ball, but Winton stepped in his way and got called for the foul. So now Nidig's going to go to the line for two as the Braves are in the double bonus. Nidig doesn't get to the line much. He hits only 54% from the line when he gets there. 
541 to go here in regulation. It's a 15-point game. Nidig steps up to the line, shooting first. Left-hander makes the first one. Makes it a 14-point game. Brooks in for Hasty. Titus Reich checks back in. Check, excuse me, checks back in for Mecca Oparunquo. Rice just pulled out momentarily to get a couple of words of encouragement from the coach after committing that quick foul a moment ago. Second free throw goes. It's a 13-point game. Braves continue with the trapping press. Tabor able to break it. Arusha gets it over to Carter, who's wide open from three-point range. Passes up the shot. Gets it over to Winton, who gets it right back to Carter. They're clearly going to run as much time off the clock as possible. Let it go down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Now down to seven. Arusha at the top of the key over to Perry. Perry working against Nidig. The shot clock is going to expire. So good defense by the Braves. Tabor's able to run 30 seconds off the clock, but they can't score. They didn't even seem to realize that the shot clock was running down. Still a 13-point game. Braves trying to get back into this one. They still have not made it a single-digit game since the first half. Rice pulls up, knocks down the jumper. It's an 11-point game. Full timeout called by the Braves. We'll take another break. It's an 11 point game now. 4.55 to go here on KOFO. Taco Bell has a feast for you that lasts all day. From breakfast to late night, enjoy 20 decadent cravings for just a dollar each. Like the bacon grilled breakfast burrito, the beefy Fritos burrito, and the shredded chicken mini quesadilla, each just a dollar. So many delicious choices for so little money. Dollar all day at Taco Bell. Let the feast begin. At participating locations for a limited time only, prices and items may vary. Breakfast items available until 11 a.m. tax extra. It's Macy's One Day Sale. Saturday. With a preview day Friday. With amazing deals of the day store wide. Save 60%. On IZOD sweaters for him. And Style Co. sweaters for her. Take 30%. Plus an extra 15%. On blenders. Juicers. And food processors. Wool blend and down coat for him. And her. Only $89.99. Family pajama and sleepwear for her. 60% off. And take 50 to 80%. I'll select fine jewelry. Earn plenty points. Green Macy's One Day Sale. Plenty. Lots of points. Lots of places. One rewards program. Savings of regular sale and fairs prices. Exclusions of One day. And welcome back to Wilson Fieldhouse. The Braves scratching and clawing their way back to within 11. Neighbors lead has been as big as 24. But the Braves are starting to run out of time. We've got less, less than five minutes to go, so they'll need to really crack down on defense. They forced a shot clock violation on the last possession, and they'll need to fire out all cylinders offensively from here on out. Here's Wicked breaking a trap, swinging it over to Arusha, defended by Wright. Rusha dribbles, passes it over to Perry. Perry's going to drive, gets to the lane, can't get it to fall. The tip-in attempt is missed, and Jeremiah Brooks ends up with it. So that's exactly what the Braves needed out of that one. Cameron Lindsay to pull up from deep three-point range. Off the back of the rim, Logan Bollinger gets the offensive board. Into Brooks. Looked like he might have gotten fouled. Nothing called. Rebounded by Tabor off the missed layup. Lance Carter. Brings it up, gets it over to Arusha. Arusha is fouled by Titus Rice, and he'll go to the line for one and one. That's foul number nine on the Braves. So after this, it'll be two shots from here on out for both teams. Arusha to the line. A 71% free throw shooter on the year. 4.13 to go in the second half. First shot is good. Lead pushed back up to 12. Free throw number two by Arusha is up and good. So the lead is 13 again. Nidig to bring it down for the Braves. Defended by Arusha. Passes it over to Titus Rice. Rice is going to take Perry off the dribble. Pulls up. Knocks down the jumper. He's got 15. It's an 11-point game. 
Winton slowly bringing the ball up the court. Swing it to Arusha. Now he's going to be trapped. Works his way out of the trap. Gets it over to Winton. Defended by Titus Rice. Winton gets it around Rice. Drives. Has his shot blocked, but he's fouled. To go to the line for a pair. Fouled by Jacob Nydig. Winton, the 67% free throw shooter, goes to the line. Shot is up and short, but it rolls in. 12-point game now, 84-72. The Braves just can't quite seem to clear that double-digit mark as the lead has been hanging around from between about 11 and 14 for a good part of the second half. 3.32 to go. Second free throw makes it a 13-point game. Nidig working against Winton. Over to Cameron Lindsay. Lindsay swings it to Nidig. Now he faces a trap here on the right side. So kick it out to Titus Rice. Rice wants a three. No good. Gets his own rebound. Now it's knocked away. Loose ball. Perry comes up with it. Fast break, and it's going to be an easy dunk on the other end for Winton. And that pushes the lead back up to 15 for Tabor. Three minutes to go. Knighted gets it over to Cameron Lindsay. Works it into Logan Bollinger. Soft touch on the shot. Makes it a 13-point game. And a full timeout called for the Braves. We'll take 30 seconds and then be back to Wilson Fieldhouse. You're listening to OU Basketball on KOFO Sports. As a parent, I've got a lot on my plate. Taking the kids to soccer practices, chess club, and field trips. But thanks to Custom Inc., ordering custom shirts for all their events is fun and easy. Talk about a time saver. And my kids are all smiles and shirts they love. For all your school needs, choose Custom Inc. Show your spirit with custom shirts, backpacks, hoodies, and more. All the gear you need all year long. Your designs, quality products, free shipping. Start designing for your school today at custominc.com. And we're back at Wilson Fieldhouse, where the Braves are down 13. They've cut significantly into this Tabor lead, but just haven't been able to get over the hump and make it a single-digit game and really threaten to take the lead back. They've fallen just short of that, but they've fought here throughout the game, not just not going quietly into the night by any means. Now Tabor inbounds. Carter to take it down the court. Now the Braves trap and Tabor loses control and they're going to say they... It was last touched by Lindsay, so Tabor will retain possession of the ball. Per- or Perry to throw it in. Gets it into Jones. Now a handoff to Carter. Carter looks to drive. Has it stolen by Lindsay. Lucy almost loses it. Fast break. Lindsay looks to pull up, then continues forward. Now Pel- passes it into Bollinger. Fouled as he goes up from close range. He'll shoot two. The team's leading scorer today has 18. He'll shoot two more here. Try and pull back to within 11. First free throw's good. He's only missed five all year. Two twenty-four remaining, trying to make this an 11-point game. He's got it. 87-76. Now here's Winton breaking the press. Now he's trapped. He gets it away to Perry. Perry swings it all the way across to Devondre Jones, who one move on Nidig and just blew by him for the layup. 89-76. Here's a three by Perez. Got it. 
10-point game. That's the closest Ottawa has been since about midway through the first half. The Tabor able to break the press. Bollinger almost got the steal. Now Winton has it, and there's a reach by Nidig. Winton's going to go to the line. Not a terrible guy to put on the line. He's only 67% free throw shooter on the season. 151 to go. Braves still down 10, trying to fight their way back. They've been down by as many as 24. First free throw, good by Winton. Winton is, has scored a game high 26 points now for Tabor. Averages about 17 per game, so he can go off on any given night. And he has done that today. Hits the second free throw, and the lead pushed back up to 12. We haven't seen Hollis Mitchell at all in at point guard as Nidig has been trusted with the ball and running the offense for the Braves and down the stretch here. It's Titus Rice over to Nidig, back to Rice. Rice is fouled on the floor right before he stepped back to try and take an off-balance three. So the two free throws probably the more likely way to score. Rice has 15 points today. Free throw number one is good. That's the good net. 11-point game now, 138 on the clock. Shot number two, good. So it's back to 10. There's the throw in. And out of bounds as Tabor tried to break the pass. Press, the pass was too low. Carter couldn't bring it in. It went off of his foot and out of bounds. So the Braves could finally make this a single digit game or single digit lead for Tabor if they can score on here on this possession. Cameron Lindsay inbound to Jacob Dydig. Now the ball at the top of the key, Perez. Double teamed and loses the ball. Now Tabor is on the run. Winton with the ball now swings it back out to Carter. But they'll reset the offense. Fouled by Cameron Lindsay. Carter to the free throw line for two. So Perez was double teamed, had nowhere to go with it. Turns, looked, and just ended up having the ball knocked away as he tried to find someone to pass to. The ball goes the other way, and now Tabor can make this a 12-point lead again. First free throw is good. Number two is up and almost ripped out and rolled in. 12-point game. They're just seems to be some invisible force preventing the Braves from making this lead single digit. Logan Bollinger fouled as he drives. He'll go to the line for a pair. 104 left on the clock. Bollinger's got 20 today. His first free throw is short. No good for Bollinger with only a sixth missed free throw this season. As Jeremiah Brooks checks in for Devin Perez. Free throw number two on its way. Good. So still an 11-point game. The Braves continue to try and trap on the press here. That'll be a kick ball. Jeremiah Brooks jumping up and got his foot out trying to stop the pass. Here, thrown into Carter. Carter now on a fast break will stop and bring it back out. Now he has it. Blom loses the ball. Titus Rice has it. And he's got it stripped as he tries to drive. And here's Devondre Jones right to the hoop and up and in. 13 point game. And. The Braves' last chance probably is put through their fingers. Bollinger for three, misses. Rebounded by Devondre Jones. Tabor's going to keep trying to push the tempo. And now Winton will back off. Pass intercepted by Nidig. Here's Cameron Lindsay for three. Way off target, air ball. Nidig's got the offensive rebound. The layup misses. 
Rice is able to dip it in. But again, that'll just pull it back to within 11. 20 and a half seconds remaining on the clock here. And the Braves have called a timeout to talk things over. As they take a full timeout, we'll just take a 30-second break and then be back with the end of the game. You're from Wilson Fieldhouse on KOFO. When I listen to Audible, I'm not cooking dinner for one. I'm on horseback, galloping across the Scottish moors towards my one true love. There, through the mist, I see my beloved, kilt flapping in the breeze. The fibers of his shirt struggle against his bulging muscles as he takes me from my horse and... My frittata! Go to audible.com slash act now and your first download is free. Audible. Stories that surround you. It's an 11-point game with just 20 seconds left on the clock. Graves running out of options here as Tabor inbounds and immediately is fouled. We'll send Arusha to the line. 18.9 on the clock now. Arusha's first free throw is up. And we'll roll in. 13 point game now. Actually, that'll make it 12, 96, 84. Second free throw is in. Now it's 13. 18.9 seconds on the clock. Here's Logan Bollinger. Has it stolen by Winton. Winton not going to take it to the basket. And the Braves are going to let it go. They're not going to foul. Five seconds, three seconds, and they're going to let time run out. So the Braves fight back after the lead. Jumps all the way out to 24 early in the second half. They got it down to as little as 10, but could never really threaten to get the game back under control. And they end up losing this one at home, 97-84. We'll take a quick break and be back with the recap, and that'll be it. Thank you. For listening to this one here from uh, Wilson Fieldhouse, this is KFO Sports bringing you OU basketball. This is Dr. Weston Zinner at Franklin County Chiropractic in Ottawa. We hope you're enjoying the game and remind you that whether you're an athlete or a weekend warrior, we can help relieve your pain for a better performance. Call 785 242 9393 for an appointment. Searching for that perfect gift for someone? How about for yourself? This holiday season, spend your dollars wisely on something that lasts and gives back year after year after year. Shop Messengers Home Furnishings for furniture, bedding, and accessories right now during their holiday sale in South Ottawa. Need to know if your child's game or practice has been canceled due to weather? Sign up now for Ottawa Recreation Commission's text alerts. Go to orcottawaks.org to sign up or for more information. Since 1944, families of Franklin County have called Dingle and Son Mortuary and Crematory in their time of need. Why? Because of the peace of mind received knowing that Dingle and Son will take charge and exceed expectations. Visit DingleMortuary.com. When quality matters, choose the best. Choose Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling. Call today and make sure your heating and cooling system is ready for the season at 785-242-9273. Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling maintains your comfort for over 30 years. This is Ryan Disbro, your State Farm Insurance Agent in Garnett, providing insurance and financial services, including retirement options, bank loans, life insurance, and annuities. Call and schedule your financial services consultation today at 785-448-1660. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. And we're back for the post-game show here in Wilson Fieldhouse as the Braves men's team loses this one 97-84. They had a very rough first half as Tabor would go into the halftime break up 43-25. The Braves shooting just 
six percent from the field compared. Sorry, some technical difficulties there, but uh, Tabor jumps out to that 43-25 lead. Ottawa really struggling offensively in that first half, but then it, they get things turned around in the second half to the tune of 59 points in that second half. Unfortunately, Tabor just kept the pace up and were only outscored by five, putting up 54 points of their own. They led by as many as 24 in that second half. The Braves would had took on in sort of a never-say-die attitude and brought it all the way to within 10 a few times down the stretch, but there just seemed to be some sort of guiding force preventing them from ever bringing that lead down to single digits and getting the game really to within reach as uh, Tabor wins this one, 97-84. Tabor improves to 7-6 and six on the year, 6-1 and one in KCAC play. Ottawa's four-game winning streak is snapped. They'll drop to 4-3 and three in conference play and 6-6 six and six overall. Logan Bollinger and Titus Rice with the really came out coming up big today, and then Cameron Lindsay as well. Logan Bollinger had 21 points, five boards, and blocked two shots. Titus Rice right behind him with 19 points and had four rebounds of his own, and then Cameron Lindsay coming up with 13 points, four boards, and four steals. I think all of those really came down the stretch in the second half as they were trying to come back. So Lindsay, a, a big part of that comeback attempt that just ends up falling a, a little bit short, and the Braves drop to four and three. But we will be back on Tuesday, a rare Tuesday game in KCAC play, as the Braves will be traveling to play in Wichita against Friends University. The women's tip-off will be at six, and the men's tip-off will be at eight. Everything. He will be broadcast right here on KOFO. Yeah, of course, the Wise Guys pregame, Wise Guys Construction pregame show will start at 5:45 for that women's game. So be sure to tune in then for more Ottawa Braves basketball action. But that will be it from Wilson Fieldhouse for today. Thank you for listening. I'm David Potter with KOFO. This has been a production of Ottawa Basketball on KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast of Ottawa University Braves Basketball on KOFO. Brought to you by Modern Woodland Agent Dale Pearson, Dr. Hale Family Dentistry, Kansas State Bank, Adamson Brothers Heating and Cooling, the Ottawa Recreation Commission, and by State Farm Insurance Agent Ryan Dispro, Ransom Memorial Hospital, Sutton's Jewelry, Car Star, Messenger's Home Furnishings. Also by Dingle & Sun Mortuary, Ottawa University, the Ottawa Herald, Wise Guys Construction, Kramer Pharmacy, Franklin County Chiropractic, and Cosentino's Price Chopper, State Farm Insurance Agent Keith King, Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, People's Bank, Advantage Electric, Quality Structures Incorporated, and Maxwell Chiropractic. For more information about our next OU Brave Sports broadcast, log on to the KOFO Sports page.